Hey everybody, welcome to the Tournament Center. I'm Zach here, here with Pro Tour Berlin finalists and European coverage standout. Lead coverage standout. Lead coverage standout, Mate Zadokai. You're playing Esper Control. Can you tell us a little bit about that deck? Yeah, so basically Esper Control is a white, blue, black control deck, which uses the most efficient removal of the format to get a uh, hold on the board and then uh, take the game away with Sphinx Revelation, Jace, and Etherlink. Cool. So let's uh, take a look at actually some of the cards you, you used to do that. Now, you just mentioned, obviously, Sphinx's Revelation, Jace, Architect of Thought. Four copies of both of these cards. Why, you know, they, they, they just draw a card. Why are you playing four of each of these? Yeah, basically, th these are the pillars of the deck, which I think all versions of Esper in this tournament ha r oh, do yeah. run for. So Sphinx's Revelation is one of the most powerful cards in the format. Mm -hmm. We've seen it in, uh, in uh, Standard, where right. it's already such a powerhouse. But now in Block, it's even better. The format's still quite fast. Mm -hmm. But you can get, uh, with your removal spell, especially with Supreme Verdict, which is also legal in block, you can sweep the board and draw some cards, land a Jace to further protect your life total, and then just play another Revelation for more cards, more life, and just find a win, win condition. Yeah, and that just ends the game. And we have seen a lot of Revelation in Standard. Now, Jace we have seen less of in Standard. You, know, mm -hmm. you may see one or two here. It's kind of good against Lingering Souls. Yeah. Here, though, we have the four full four copies. Why yeah. is this card so good in block constructed? Yeah, the good thing about the Esper deck, it's really versatile. You can do, uh, you, could, you have cards that are good against aggressive decks and control mm -hmm. decks. Jace does both. Uh, his plus one ability uh, negates the attackers, so usually against some decks which run a lot of 2-2s, two just plus one in Jace, they suddenly yeah. become much smaller. Sometimes they can't, can't even kill Jace uh, by themselves after using right. the plus one ability. But against control decks, the plus one ability is not so good, whereas the second ability comes right into play, you can just ride the card advantage. You play Jace, minus two, draw two or one card, usually just more lands, mm -hmm. uh, then you can plus one him, next to maybe minus two him again. Right. And Actually, he can serve as a win condition. It, all, it can also happen that you have really stalled out games. He can just plus one Jace, turn after turn, yeah. to ultimate him later. And use his ultimate. Also, again, in the yeah. blue-white decks we see in standard, sometimes there's one, two copies of Supreme Verdict. Again, here you have all four copies. Why is that so important to the yes, deck? Yes, Supreme Verdict is a, is a key card in the format. I think a lot of decks which are, uh, which are playable in this format are actually uh, good against Supreme Verdict. There's the Voice of Resurgence, right. the black-green deck has a lot of regenerators, not so good, mm -hmm. but I still want to on four just because it forces the opponent to play around it so he might not commit as many creatures to the sure. board and it, it can be quite efficient with some other removal spells that, that are in the deck so and just for four mana sweep the board you sometimes have to just always do it against some decks right. like mono red but that, otherwise you lose yeah right you can't just threaten it you have to do it so yeah. you mentioned a couple other removal spells let's actually take a look at uh some of the cards in the deck that are a little mm. bit less uh pillar but really important now you've got four azorius charm four far and away. Is this kind of your removal package? Yeah, that's the main removal package. It, the, the good thing about it is that both cards, again, are good, good against aggressive decks right. and, uh, and somewhat okay against control decks. Azorius Charm can either put the creature on top on, of the library, which saves you precious life totals, uh, but also can draw your card if you need right. against control. So that's already used the versatility from the other cards coming back. Mm -hmm. And far away is just very efficient because you can play it at the two mana slot, which you don't have that many cards of. You can play it at three mana slot for the away part. And if you use that five mana, it's just really, really good against uh, a lot of the aggressive decks, especially ones running green, uh, such as Armada Worm, other tokens oh, wow. where you just bounce a token kills it, and then they sacrifice the other creatures yeah, they have. You so you're super efficient. Yeah, you just get to kill two guys. Yeah. Now, Syncopate here, three copies of this counter spell. There's a lot of counter magic actually available in this format. Mm. Why Syncopate specifically? Yeah, we played around a lot with the numbers in Syncopate, okay. but we found out that uh, you want two mana uh, counter spells, basically. Against some decks, you really want, turn, uh, you want to counter them uh, on turn two. Just Syncopate for one, uh, an aggressive creature, maybe an opposing Sync Collector. Sure. Just a lot of options, and you can just play your lands with Syncopate mana up. You don't have to worry about anything. So that, that's kind of fine. Totally. And then Detention Sphere, of course, takes care of the threats Again. that you can't Supreme Verdict, like Lotla Troll that you mentioned. Yeah, Let's it's very look, versatile. Let's look at how you actually end the game, though. Now, you were talking earlier about Sin Collector, not necessarily very intuitive uh, to splash black almost essentially for a three mana two one in a control deck. Why is Sin Collector so important to this deck? Yeah, mainly Sin Collector is a, is a great card uh, because it serves two purposes against, again, again, against aggressive decks and control decks. <laughs> because against aggressive decks, you can play him, you see their hand, usually they have 
Uh, I've seen putrefies, advents of the worms, abrupt decays, dyna charges, yeah. mizzy mortars, a lot of uh, cards which are, might not always be good against you, but you get the information from their hand and discard their best instant sorcery. Right. So that that's his use against bad decks, but again, against the mirror match where the opponent has Sphinx Revelations, which is the main card of uh, in the mirror match. Uh, you, you just want to have four. It's just so efficient and it can block as well. Right. Uh, and other, uh, combined with the Blood Baron of Viscopa, which we'll get to in a second, uh -huh. it actually protects you against uh, edict effects yourself, such as Devour Flesh, Far Away, and so right. on. Right, and even if they far and away it to bounce it to edict or Blood Baron, you get to use it again. Exactly, it's more than fine. Totally. So you did point out Blood Baron. Now, a lot of people mm. have uh, Ghost Council in this slot or Obzadat. Yes. Why did we go with Blood Baron instead? Uh, Blood Baron is just really efficient. It's against the green, white, and the green, black decks, which we expect it quite a lot. And mm. it can be also annoying in the mirror match okay. because it cannot be bounced by Azorius Charm. Right. Uh, and it cannot be a detention sphere away. So sometimes when you know, when we both discard each other with the sync collectors, we don't know that no one has any relevant cards. And that's just right. slam the Blood Baron and hope he gets there. And then finally, Etherling. Now, Etherling, kind of an old school control finisher. Why are we playing two of these yeah. guys? Etherling is uh, probably the best finisher, and we're not running more uh, just because uh, it does cost six mana. Mm. In some matchups, the Blood Baron is a little bit more effective. Right. So we've kind of uh, only only run two, but it's the best uh, creature in the mirror in the mirror match against other Esper decks because once you land an Etherling with enough blue mana up to exile it right. uh, uh, away from removal, yeah. then it just uh, it can it wins the game by itself. And not even uh, like chaining Sphinx Revelation will help the opponent. Yeah, right. Because you uh, you can you can plus one minus one it every turn for eight damage, which is just massive. Right, and and you can't kill it, so you're yeah. doing that every turn. All right, let's take a look at the mana base here now. We uh, obviously we've got twelve Ravnica dual lands. I'm I'm more interested actually in the next slide, which yeah. it'll be I, I think what six total gates. If we can take a look at these on the screen. Yeah. Now, you were saying earlier we were watching uh, one of the matches that was mm. up on K, and you were saying, oh, it looks like PV has a lot of basics. Mm. Now, you've got, what, uh, 18 dual lands? Why, why so many of these? Uh, because, after all, you run a three color deck, and you need double white for Supreme Verdict every okay. time on turn four, and you need double blue for Jace the Architect on turn four again. So you need double blue and double black, uh, double blue and double white. Right. But you also need at least one black for the collectors, for the yep. faraways, for the blood barons, and so on. So basically, we, we decided on, on such a mix just because the five black ones uh, are supplement our main colors, and this is just uh, an added bonus. It's a concession to the sideboard, which we'll get to later. Totally. And then I'll explain, because uh, this composition makes a lot of sense with the following slide, where uh, I, I'm assuming that you, you'll show my five of my planes and four of my islands. Right, okay, so <laughs> we, we've got basic lands. You're going to play basic lands yeah, in the game of Magic. No swamp relevant, but let's take a look at that sideboard. Um, the first card that we're going to see here, Precinct Captain. It's got a slide to itself. Now, this, again, is a nod back to, like, 1997 <laughs> when you'll play your control deck and bring yeah. in a creature. How did we get to Precinct Captain? Well, Precinct Captain, I, I was really not a fan of him. I, oh, I yeah. thought, like... Oh, he doesn't do. He just a two two. He's going to get killed by anything. But right. we, we figured out that in the in the sideboard mirror matches, sometimes playing a precinct captain on turn two right. is a game over because you both trying to do the same thing and sync collecting and jacing and things revelationing. That just playing a two two, which pressures the board so much, nah, it kind of uh, gives you much more presence and it's just really hard to deal with because uh, most players will sideboard out a supreme verdict. Right. And after one hit, it turns off all their edicts. Exactly. Yeah. So, okay. Devour flesh. So, so, far away. so that's one plan. All right, we've got some more supplemental cards. Mm. We've got additional finishers. Reap Intellect I like, yeah. presumably for the mirror. Uh, wh why these Angel of Serenity is really uh, quick? Basically, Angel of Serenity uh, is great. We swap them out with Etherlings against the green decks because uh, the, the plan is basically to play, have three Blood Barons uh, okay. uh, uh, in the side like, after board. We play the Blood Baron, and suddenly they can't attack us efficiently. Right. They only have uh, Advent of the Worm, Experiment 1, and Dead Bridge Goliath as mono green colored creatures that can go gotcha. get through Vampire. So basically we stole the board, uh, they can't do much maybe with Sphinx, with Jace, and one, then we play Angel of Serenity, target all their green guys, oh, and okay. start attacking with Blood Baron because the Angel can block himself and you start gaining a lot of life with Blood Baron. Totally, so it's, it's almost kind of a combo. Finally, let's yeah. round out the sideboard really quickly. Looks like we're just kind of uh, producing more answers. Uh, Counterspell, yeah. Edict to just keep you alive, Dispel presumably for more Sphinx's Revelations, exactly. and Detention Sphere. Versatility. 
Yeah, exactly. We, we didn't quite know what to expect in the metagame, so right. we, we went with a deck which is versatile, good against control, good against aggro, and has a lot of options and uh, possibilities to outplay your opponent. And it sounds like you're saying that a lot. All right, we've got Esper Control, good against control, good against aggro. I'm Zach Hill. This is Mate Zadokai. This is, uh, let's take you back to Pro Tour Dragon's Maze.